studying which books we should go by. I found many books in the Bible. And many of us have been under false illusions about some of the books. For instance, we, most of us have thought that there were five books of Moses. And it might well be. 
but I come here to learn. And coming to learn, I only seen four. I never seen where Genesis was called the book of Moses, or the first book of the Bible was called the book of Moses. But the first book of the Bible was named in the book of Genesis, the fifth chapter, the first verse. And as you read it, it says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. And the day that Elohim created he him, male and female created he them, and called their name Adam. This is the name of the family. And the book of Genesis is the, the record and the chronology of the family of Adam. Another thing that I was found that many of us were, have been deceived by his believing that we had two books that Moses carried around. Yesterday the elder said it was this one book and all the laws were on the tablets of stone. But when I researched it, I found out there was a book called the book of Moses, the book of the law, and the book of the covenant. And as I studied those books, I seen that all those books were the same book. There was no difference at all in the book of Moses, the book of the covenant, and the book of what? The law. They are the same book. And we can find this if you would like verses on it. You can find out about the book of the law by looking at Deuteronomy 17 and 18, if you write that time down, that talks about the book of the law. The book of the covenant you'll find in the book of Exodus 24 and 7. And the book of Moses is mentioned in 2 Chronicles 25 and 4. They're just one place, but all of these are the same books. But I was, yeah, 2 Chronicles 25 and 4. Then I was looking for the, the Ten Commandments, what book were they? And I found out that the Ten Commandments is not a book. I found out that the Ten Commandments had two names in the Bible, or in the Holy Scriptures of truth. The two names were the Ark of the Covenant. The other name was the Table of Stone. They were never called a book. But Moses, the Almighty commanded that he bring him a, an ark made of wood and that he made his Ten Commandments on those. The first was the, the ark that he broke with his fingers on the table of stone. And we can find that by looking in the book of Exodus, the 24th chapter. If you peek in the book of Exodus, the 24th chapter, you will notice that there is a difference in the Ark of the Covenant and the Book of the Law. We find in Exodus 24, And said, and he took the book of the covenant and read in it in the audience of the people. And they said, All that Yahweh had said, we will do and be obedient. And that's speaking of the book of the law or the book of the covenant. We find that the 12th verse down further, and it says that Yahweh said unto Moses, Come up to me and to the mount. And he did. And I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandment, which I have written, that thou mayest teach him. Now this table of stone, you will find many places in the scriptures. It is recorded 
And if you'd like to take notes of this, you can find the tables of stone or the Ark of the Covenant. It is mentioned, first of all, in the... It is also mentioned, rather, in Exodus 34, chapter, the 28th verse. Samuel, would you come up and read that? It is also recorded in the book of Numbers, the 10th chapter, the 33rd verse, as well as Deuteronomy 4, 13, Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, the 1st to the 5th verse, and uh, Deuteronomy, the 31st verse, the 24th to the 26th verse. If you read just one verse and then we can go on. I'd like you to turn to the book of uh, Deuteronomy in the 31st chapter. And you can read the 24th to the 26th verse. Come to the microphone and read the cloud. had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished. That Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of Yahweh, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of Yahweh, your Elohim, that it may be there for a witness against thee. And you notice the Ark of the Covenant, the covenant of what we know today are the, as the Ten Commandments. And it was put in the Ark, and that is known as the Ark of the Covenant. And the laws, the book of the law, was also put in that same Ark. So the Ark had one book. There was a book of the laws, and it was there with the Ark of the Covenant. But the Ark of the Covenant is not addressed as being a book. They are the words of the Almighty. So the question was asked us, which book should we go by? There are many books. Should we go by the New Testament? Should we go by the Holy Quran? Should we go by the Talmud? Or should we go by the Tanakh, or the Book of the Law, and also with the Book of the Prophets? Well, the scriptures tell us in the book of Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth verse, to trust in Yahweh with all our heart, all of it, not part of it, not a little of it, but with all your heart, and lean not into thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in our own eyes, fear Yahweh, and depart from evil. So he tells us to trust in him, no one else but in him. And then we find in the book of Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, the 5th to the 7th verse, it says, Thus said Yahweh. Notice it didn't say, Thus said Peter. Thus said Paul. It didn't say, Thus said Elisha. It didn't say, Thus said Daniel. But it said, Thus said Yahweh. Speaking in the first person. And the prophet is letting the people know that these are the words of the true and living Elohim. And he said, Thus said Yahweh, Cursed be the man that trusts in man and make it flush his arm, and whose heart departed from Yahweh. He said, Cursed be that man. So many of us today say, Well, it's not me, it's speaking of. I don't trust in any man. I don't trust in my leaders. I don't trust in a guide or in a presence. But I put all my trust in the Almighty. Well, we're going to find out. For before I'm finished speaking, the Almighty will make an indictment against you and see if your heart is pure and see if you are really trusting in Him or in something else. But we're told to trust in the Almighty and not man. Well, common sense will tell us if we are to trust only in Yahweh with all our heart and lean, lean not unto our own understanding, then we should be looking for His words and not the words of man, especially in light of the fact that he told us not to trust in man. And then we turn to the book 
and see if there was a book that the Almighty wanted his people to trust in. And we turn our scriptures to the book of Isaiah, the 34th division. 34th chapter of Isaiah. to the 34th chapter, we notice something in the 16th verse. It says, Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read. Out of the book of Yahweh and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. For my mouth has spoken it, and my spirit has gathered them. So the Almighty says, Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh. And what is the book of Yahweh? The book of Yahweh is the same as the book of Moses, the same as the book of the covenant, the same as the book of the law. They are synonymous with one another. And they are called through the scriptures, the books of Yahweh. These are the books that record his words, his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, his precepts, and his testimonies. And these are the books the Almighty told his servants, those that feared him and trembled at his word to trust in, not man. But we found that as we studied, studied the scriptures, we did not want to trust in the Almighty. We did not want to put our faith in him. And he recognized this, and the Almighty put a curse on his people. And this curse is mentioned in the book of Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. And if we turn there, the 20th chapter of Ezekiel. <clears throat> Almighty said, and I lift it in the 20th chapter of Ezekiel. The 23rd verse, it says, And I lifted up my hand unto them also in the wilderness, that I would scatter them amongst the heathens and disperse them through the countries as we are this day because they have not executed my judgments and have despised my statutes and have polluted my sights and their eyes went after their father's idols Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. The Almighty said he gave us statutes that are not good, and judgments whereby a man cannot live in them. Now what are these statutes and what are these judgments that the Almighty said that he gave his people? We find, as we look in the book of Amos, the third chapter, the Almighty reveals something to us about his character. In Amos, the third chapter, we find... <coughs> That the third chapter of Amos, the sixth verse reads, Should a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people be not afraid? Should there be evil in any city, and Yahweh has not done it? So we know that if there was a book with bad statutes and judgments in it, whereby a man could not live, that this book was only written by the commandments of the Almighty. Because he allowed Satan to do his will. And that's all Satan means, the adversary. And he allows the adversary to do his will. The Almighty lets us know this by verifying the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter, the 5th verse, when he said, I and Yahweh, and there is none else. There is no Elohim beside me. Amen. I created the heaven alone. I stressed forth the heavens by myself. 
I did all these things. He said, I create light and I create darkness. I create peace and I create evil. Ah, Yahweh do all these things. So the Almighty lets us know that He, in the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter, the 7th verse, it is He that creates evil. No one else. There's no one fighting against the Almighty. If Satan tried to engage in a fight with the Almighty, or if anyone tried to fight the Almighty, that war wouldn't last a fraction of a second. And the only reason the adversary is here is because he's doing his will. That's read in the book of Job said, There was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yahweh, and Satan appeared amongst them also. Why? Because he was a son. Many Christians are under the erroneous impression that there is only one son. And they say, well, the son of Elohim. There is no the son because the Almighty has many sons. And if you want to know who the Almighty named as his son out of his mouth, well, he spoke and told us in the book of Exodus, the fourth chapter, the 22nd verse, that Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So the Almighty Son is Israel. And we're going to deal with who is the Son of the Almighty. And then if you look, and that's, that's the nation that the Almighty chose, the nation of Israel. If you want to know what tribe he pertains to as his son, that's in the book of Isaiah, and that's Ephraim. And if you want to know what king the Almighty named as his only begotten son, his firstborn son, all you need to do is turn to the book of Psalms. 89th chapter, the 18th verse. And the Almighty will plainly let you know what individual is the king of all kings. But getting back to our subject, what books should we go by? What laws we're done away with? And what is the law that brings us to Christ? I will show you those laws. But the Almighty said in the book of Ezekiel, the 20th chapter, 25th verse, that he would give us statutes that were gotten not good, and statutes whereby a man should not live in him. Let's look at some of these statutes. Now, I might be wrong, and let's read them here today for you to correct me. Because uh, none of us knows everything, so therefore we have engaged ourselves in this type of summons that we can be corrected by one another. And if I'm wrong, correct me. But I'm going to show you some of those statutes that are bad, whereby a man cannot live in. Let's go to the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter. To be a prophet unto the being like Moses, whom I knew face to face, and I spoke to mouth to mouth as a man speaketh unto his friend. They verified that. Throughout the scriptures, not only through Exodus 33 and 11, but also through Numbers the 12th chapter, the 10th verse, also through the book of Deuteronomy 32 and 10, he lets us know that there would never be another prophet unto, unto him like Moses. When Moses wanted to know something from the Almighty, he didn't cry, he didn't beg, he didn't fall on his hands and knees. And this Bible says that he went to see what Yahweh said about a matter. And the Almighty, you know, Yahweh spoke to him because the scripture said he came down in a pillar of what? A cloud of what? He traveled by and came down in a pillar of smoke when they seen him in a tabernacle and stood before Moses. Anything Moses wanted to know, the people always knew the Almighty was there because they seen the smoke. They seen the cloud follow him. And the Almighty came down and appeared and talked to this great man. But we find out that Moses was not able to go to the promised land, was he? And what did he do? What was the great sin that Moses did that he did not go to the promised land? Huh? He, I, he did not sanctify the Almighty. And what is sanctifying? Sanctifying is setting apart, magnifying, Glorifying, exalting. He told him to hit the rock and water would come out of the rock. But what, what did Moses do? He hit the rock and said, come drink. He rubbed it. He didn't glorify the creator at all. 
He didn't say, thus saith Yahweh, or this is what Yahweh gave you. He did what many of our leaders do today. When they teach, they don't even read from the scriptures. They don't even tell them that this is thus saith Yahweh. The people around them think that they're the wise ones because all they do is study the words of the Almighty and learn it and then they exploit it. They say, oh, isn't that brother wise and understanding person? He said something the other day I read that, that what he said was in the scriptures. Anything wise that he says come from the scriptures. He just didn't sanctify y'all and let you know that these were his words. It's like a man that, that's a counterfeiter, a man that's a forger. A man that's a deceiver. He'll deceive you and write a letter and put somebody else's signature on that letter when he knows it's not his. But this is how our people was. And this is the reason that Moses did not get to the promised land. Because he did not glorify the Almighty. But we're going to see here what glorification is. We get to one of the great laws of the Almighty in the book of Matthew the 5th chapter the 31st, 38th verse it reads you have heard that it has been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth but I say unto you that ye resist not evil but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek turn the other to him also and if any man sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, give him thy cloak also. And if any man compel thee to go with him one mile, go with him two. So in the light of this, what is it really saying? It's really saying that if the enemy hits you, don't fight him back. If the enemy take you to the court and see you at the law and take away your bedroom suit, give him your living room suit. If he take away your coat, give him your cloak. If he kidnap you and make you go one mile, <coughs> tell him, you know, we ain't got time to lose both of them. I'm going to go with you another mile. <laughs> and then it says, love them that despitefully use you. Now common sense to tell us that that's a statue that is not good. And how can you tell the truth? The way that I found to determine any truth is that all truths are consistent with universal laws and all truths are totally consistent. There is no contradiction in a truth. If it contradicts itself, it's not a truth. And all truths are consistent with universal and natural laws. It says, love your enemy. If any animal today loved his enemy, he would be extinct. If the rabbits start loving the wolves, there would be no rabbits. If Jacob started loving the Gentiles, we would be extinct. That's why really the Almighty warned us so that we would know who he was when he said, I will send thy enemy against thee in hunger and in thirst and in want of all things. He let us know that we were dealing with our enemy. The word enemy is somebody that you're adversary. And anyone that loves his adversary and don't won't resist their adversary would be extinct today. I'm going to make this very quick. Another statue I'd like to point out that is a statue whereby a man cannot live, we find in the book of 1 Peter. I'll go to Ephesians first, the sixth chapter. According to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, this is the law. And I want many of you all while I read this, put yourself in a place of a white man that's a Ku Klux Klan. I think that he's a Klansman. He's a rebel. He hates you. He hates you because he knows who you are. And then he reads this verse. Put yourself in this position. Put yourself in his thoughts as we read this verse. Ephesians 6 and 5. It says, Servants be obedient to them that are your what? Masters. Masters according to the flesh. With all fear and trembling and singleness of mind or singleness of heart as unto Christ. In other words, act like this hillbilly is Christ. 
and y'all are waiting for Christ to come back. He's here. Every time you see your master, you're looking in the eyes of Christ. He's here. You don't have to look very far for him. He never left you. Every time you see a police beating a black boy, and he, he's never charged with anything, it's always justifiable homicide. It's always open season on our people. That's because he is Christ. Look what it said. Servants be obedient to these that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and singleness of heart as unto Christ. Not with eye servants as man pleases, but as servants of Christ doing the will of Elohim from your heart. I'm not, this is nothing I wrote. Then the seventh verse says, with goodwill, doing service as to the Lord and not man. In other words, whatever he tell you, act like that's the Lord talking to you. Act like that's Christ. That's how the slave master see it. And how did the slave see it? The slave slave that says, hey, I want to go to heaven. And if I got to take this brutality and end you main treatment and and atrocities and unspeakable evils from this man in order to be with my Lord in heaven, I'm going to take it. That's what the slave said. And the master said, if this is what I got to do to keep this nigga down, I'm going to do it because the good Lord granted me that. He told him that he's to be my servant. Then we turn to the book of First Peter. It says in the book of First Peter, the second chapter, Now this is no book that I wrote. But it was wrote. And the Almighty granted Satan permission to put this in his book. And look what it said. Servants, 1 Peter 2, 18. Servants be subject to your masters with all fear. Not only to the good and gentle masters, but also to the forward or the mean ones. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward yellow him endure grief and suffering wrongfully. That's thanksworthy. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted or whooped for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with Elohim. Now watch the 21st verse. And understand what it says. For the scripture said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, but with all you're getting, you understand. And I'm so blessed today that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to people that can understand the English language. And they realize that I did not put this in this book. The 21st verse says, For even here unto you were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. So, what is it telling us to do? Suffer. Suffer wrong for them. Don't fight back. That's if you're going to be a good Christian. But most of us that have common sense, our common sense won't allow that. But it will fight with our spirituality and we will teach it, but we're not going to let nobody abuse us because that good common sense tell us that. But nevertheless, we will give this bad doctrine to others. This is a bad doctrine. It's a bad statute whereby a man cannot live by him. And this is not the book that the Almighty told his people to follow. But the book that the Almighty spoke of is also mentioned in the book of Malachi, the third chapter, the 16th verse. We find in Malachi, the third chapter, the 16th verse, that these words are written. 
Then they that feared Yahweh spoke often one to another. And Yahweh heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared Yahweh and thought on his name. A book of remembrance was wrote. So, brothers and sisters, if I'm wrong, correct me. If I'm right, keep studying. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Four Tribe Entertainment. The testimony. Come on. Yeah. First we hunting, and then we fishing. To gather Jacob out these four corners, that's the mission. That's the mission. First we hunting, and then we fishing. We got our slaps up in our hands, and this next we pitching. Next we pitching. First we hunting, and then we fishing. To gather Jacob out these four corners, that's the mission. That's the mission. First we hunting, and then we fishing. We got our slaps up in our hands, and this next we pitching. Next we pitching. To go to war, first we claim peace to the nation. You slaughtered. Cause you may just have to take men, women, son, and the daughters May have to slay them, they ain't meet us with bread and no water They cannot enter to the tenth generation, that's order Of Elohim's commandments, cause y'all say he will gather us Even if we were scattered to some other planet Can't take for granted the works of Almighty Yah That's why we hunting the fish for our people Cause we inspire to bring back our people to the path We win the straight, we suffer every day for decisions that we have made It's commandments that we keep even without them, we surely lack We the only people that have been stolen Haven't been back First we hunting, and then we fishing To gather Jacob out these four corners That's the mission, that's the mission First we hunting, and then we fishing We got our slaps up in our hands And this next we pitching, next we pitching First we hunting, and then we fishing To gather Jacob out these four corners That's the mission, that's the mission First we hunting, and then we fishing We got our slaps up in our hands And this next we pitching Next we pitch it. Shaking the shit from the dust and I'm teaching and warning them, bringing them back to the fold. Don't follow the actions, they lead you to slaughter. I pray for the people, they praying to eat you. They forcing the people, I force the evil. I cry loud and spare not that Yahweh is the only God. With the law and the testimony, I can prove to you Christ never died. They telling lies inside the church. All the people empty out their purse. Walking after the imagination of your heart, the reason black people curse. I'm a fisher, this is bait. Press play and you can't escape. I'm a hunter, I lie and wait. Teach you laws, this is Yah's grace. I'm a hunter, Yah made me bold, correcting you right. To your face will shine as the brightness Turn many people to righteousness It's the girdle of my loins Go to war for y'all's flock With equity, bring it to the top First we hunting, and then we fishing To gather Jacob out these four corners That's the mission, that's the mission First we hunting, and then we fishing We got our slaps up in our hands And this next we pitching, next we pitching First we hunting, and then we fishing To gather Jacob out these four corners That's the mission, that's the mission First we hunting, and then we fishing we got the slaps up in our hands Praise and it's just we pitching. Yo. Yes, we pitching. First we hunting and then we fishing to bring my people out the graves and out of the prisons. Been a long time without a king and without an image. We return and seek Yah and King David who we sending. Please y'all forgive us while we call ourselves a Muslim and a Christian bowing down to false idols while we still in this position. I want to listen, tell a fool nothing. He won't hear your wisdom. So I only drop a seat next thing you knew it started guarding off this music, harken to it, I don't know Cause we blind to the code Still strive to open their eyes Cause the wise win the souls All you speak is y'all's truth And you don't gotta argue with them Cause a man convinced against his will Is of the same opinion First we hunting, and then we fishing To gather Jacob out these four corners That's the mission, that's the mission First we hunting, and then we fishing We got our slaps up in our hands And this next we pitching, next we pitching First we hunting, and then we fishing To gather Jacob up out these four corners, that's the mission. That's the mission. First we hunting, and then we fishing. We got our slaps up in our hands, and this next we pitching. Next we pitching.